ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ادم اسكن انت وزوجك الجنه وكلا منها رغدا حيث شئتما ولا تقرب هذه الشجرة فتكون من الظالمين فأظلهم الشيطان عنها فأخرجهما مما كان فيه وقل نحبطوا بعدكم لبعد عدو ولكم في الأرض مستقر ومتاع إلى حين رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين يا رب <تصفيق> So today Before I begin, I want to discuss something interesting that I think you will find very interesting. There have been three explosions. One was when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the creation. Alam yara alladhina kafaru anna samawati wal ardi kanata. Did not the... People who denied the truth see that the heavens and the earth was one and then we blew it. And then this, the peak of this, all of this creation was the creation of the earth. And then there was the creation of living things. And from water all living things were created and the peak of that creation of water was the human being. Then for this human being, the, a new explosion after the Prophet ﷺ, a new explosion started, particularly an explosion that was going to manifest itself over time more and more and more and more and more. And that is, سَنُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ That we will show you our signs in the horizons and in yourselves حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِ Until it is clear that this is the truth. So now this human being, over time, he's beginning to get knowledge that is bringing him closer and closer to the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like the Prophet said, لَا تَنْقِطُوا إِجَائِبُهُ Its treasures will never finish. So you have the Qur'an, and then there are the signs. There is the entire history is one sign. Rasulullah himself is another sign. The creation of Allah is another sign. Human fitrah, human nature is another sign. Right? Fi anfusikum. Right? So there are all these signs and they go all back to the Qur'an. Or, and this explosion of this knowledge, who is it being given to? Sanuri, him. We will show them. So it is, to find the ayat of Allah, we have to sometimes go to them. Sanuri, him, ayatina. We have to go to the knowledge of treasure that they have and then bring it into the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet and see what fits and what doesn't fit. And the Prophet ﷺ had already said that Let the one who is here convey to the one who is not here. It may be the one who listened to it will understand it better than the one who are conveying it. And this is true especially today regarding some of the traditions of the Prophet ﷺ. So the hadith we're going to study today is very sensitive. And so this is why I'm going to mention it point by point so that the logical sequence is there. So this hadith is also, you know, a lot of the sisters, they feel uncomfortable about this hadith. But in fact, this hadith has a lot of wisdom in it, <laughs> particularly in reference to human nature and the difference between the males and the females. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is in Sahih Bukhari, by the way, in the Kitab al-Anbiya. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم استوصوا بالنساء. Be nice and kind to women. By the way, this is a command. Just like the Prophet said, اعفلوها. Grow your beard. It's a command. Grow your beard. So استوصوا بالنساء is a command. Be nice. Be kind to women. Now, now from here, the Prophet mentions some things. that make it difficult for men to be kind to women. So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned certain things in the nature of women. There's nothing wrong with this. But men need to understand because one of the problems of the modern times and in general, we tend to sometimes forget that men and women are different. And sometimes we treat men 
other women as men because we treat other people as ourselves. We tend to treat uh, other um, men, uh, other women as men, and men tend to treat men as women. They have expectations of other women. So, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِسْتَوْصُوا بِالنِّسَاءِ فَإِنَّ الْإِمْرَاتُ خُلِقَتْ مِنْ دَلْعِ Because, now the Prophet explains, the woman is created from the rib. Now this is not to insult her, because the purpose is to give the command, you should be nice. فَإِنَّ الْإِمْرَاتُ خُلِقَتْ مِنْ دَلْعِ The woman is created from the rib. وَإِنَّ أَعُوجُ and the most curved, the most crooked part, because he's giving the example of the ribs. The ribs are curved. They're not crooked. What he meant was, women are curved. As you know, uh, even in, we talk about the nature, the women's body being curved, their nature is curved, and so on and so forth. So, the most curved part of the rib is the most highest. Okay, is the highest part of the rib. But what he's actually saying is the mouth. What he's referring to is the mouth. Just like in the previous hadith that we studied, where we were talking about the wife to be grateful, or the ungrateful, when a wife is ungrateful. She says, you never did anything. This is now another hadith explaining the same idea from a different perspective. <coughs> Over there, it was telling women that you should have gratitude. Over here though, it's the other side of the coin, which is telling men that you need to be patient. And why you need to be patient. So this is uh, If you try to go and make it straight, uh, try to fix it, it will what? Break. And And if you just leave it, it'll stay curved. So meaning in order for you to enjoy the women, you have to let them be curved. If you try to straighten them, you are going to break them. You're going to break their fitrah. You're going to break their nature. So there is something about women that men enjoy, but it comes with certain difficulties. And then the Prophet says, فَاسْتَوْصُوا nisa." Again, ending with the command, So be kind to women. Now, men and women are motivated in different ways. This is the first point. I have 98 points. Men and women are motivated in different ways. This means we need to support each other in different ways. Number three, each group has its needs. And these needs determine our motivation. Number four, men feel motivation and empowered when they feel needed. When a man feels, my wife, she trusts me. She needs me, right? A man likes to give. And a woman likes to receive. You see, this is the difference. So men feel, men feel motivation and empowered when they feel needed. Women feel motivation and empowered when they feel cherished. Cherished means they like to receive. Man's greatest fear is that maybe I can't give. I can't be man enough. A woman's greatest fear is that maybe I won't be cherished enough. So you're seeing this? Hold on. Sorry about that. So, Bismillahi awalahu al akhirah. So when he, so when he feels. He feels trust. Uh, so men feel motivated, empowered when they feel needed. Women feel motivation and empowered when they feel cherished. When he feels trusted for his efforts, meaning when the wife, this is very important, when the wife, when the man feels that she trusts that I will get my job done. When the when he feels, when he feels that my wife trusts that I will do whatever it takes to make it right. Okay. And when she feels cherished, she feels motivated. When, when he feels he's not trusted and appreciated for his efforts, he loses motivation. This is natural. 
When he feels I'm trying day and night to make the family happy and I'm trying day and night to give to the family and in the end she says something that she doesn't feel, she, she invalidates his efforts to be the giver, to be the provider, to be the source of security. When his efforts to give are invalidated, so then he feels demotivated. See what happens is, in the beginning of a relationship of a husband and wife, or any male and female, in the beginning, women give a lot of free appreciation and a lot of free validation. Oh, you know, a lot of free this, right? But what happens over time? That motivate, that appreciation that is given then starts to decrease. And the, you can say, the other aspects start, which we will discuss. When he feels he's not, he, he is not trusted or appreciated for his efforts, he loses motivation. And when she feels not cared for and cherished, she loses motivation. Now, where am I getting this information from? This is top-notch research done by experts in gender studies, genders in human psychology, communication psychology, people that have, who have been psychiatrists for, for many, many years, dealing with couples, famous books like Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. You know, th this study is very, very well documented. And like I said, the latest stuff that's coming out in research is very close to the Qur'an. Is very close to the Qur'an. And so, uh, when a man is in love, this is point number seven, when a man is in love, he cares for a, her as much as for himself. He sees her happiness as his own. He can endure anything. This is how men feel. Men feel if, if she trusts me, if, if she lets me be the giver, the provider, and she trusts me that I will do my best, then the man feels I can do anything for her. I can do anything for the family. I'll do anything for the family. Most men are hungry to give love. In fact, the proper statement is most men are starving to give love. And not to be needed to feel, for a male to feel not being needed by someone is, as one uh, psychologist put it, is slow death for men. Okay? When man feels unwanted, they lose motivation. And when you lose motivation, you're hurting the relationship. They end up depressed, not knowing what's going on. But this is the side of the men. This is the side of the men. And what the Prophet is saying here, look, be kind to them. Right? Don't let the obstacles come in your way. Because women have a certain nature. What you love about them comes with, you know, every rose has a thorn. Every rose has a thorn. So that nature that they have, where, which we will discuss what nature they have, that nature that they have also has its beauty behind it or in front of it. But sometimes that nature that you don't like, it becomes more prominent. So this we will discuss. Women most often complain men do not listen. You're not listening to me. This is the most often complaint in the recent times. Men don't listen. What they really mean when they're saying that is that you don't understand. You don't. It's okay. You don't understand me. You're not understanding me. That's what they mean. Because a man's greatest need is to be appreciated. A woman's greatest need is to be understood, to be cherished. Okay? So, women most often complain men do not listen. Meaning you do not understand me. Men don't realize how important it is for women to feel supported by someone who cares. When she is upset, she needs to know that she will get understanding, empathy, compassion, and validation. What I mean by that is this. When a female is complaining, because men are goal-oriented. Men are what? And this is where, now I'm going to tell you the first major clash, how it takes place. Men are goal-oriented, and what happens? When a female complains about something, the male puts on the fix-it hat. There's no reason to complain about this. I'm going to fix it for you right now. Correct. Right? Oh, I don't know the directions from here to here to here. The husband says, okay, let's go get a GPS for you. Right? And she's really upset. Or she said, I had a very bad day at work because of such and such person. 
So the husband starts giving her advice. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you? Because men are goal oriented. Men have their fix it pat. Men have the, uh, the, 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 the way of thinking of how I can fix the problem. And if I fix the problem, you should stop complaining. This is the, the way it goes. But women don't want you to fix the problem. They don't. They want you to just listen to them. They only want you to empathize with their problem. The minute you start telling them, why don't you do this, 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 they start feeling like you invalidated their feelings. They start feeling like what? You are rejecting how they're feeling. And that, that begins to what? Hurt them. So this is another point. So most women often, most often complain is they don't listen. Meaning you do not understand me. Men don't realize how important it is. Okay. Men do not realize this because men, when men are upset, they, and the, okay, so this is, the other point is this. When men are upset, what do they like to do? When you, when men know there is going to be a conflict with a female, what do they do? Men like to be alone. Because if I talk to her, it's going to change, turn into an argument. Right? Talking to her will change into an argument. So it's better not to. Talk to her. But how do women see the silence of a man? In a woman's world, you know when women are silent and they don't say anything? It's when they have something very nasty to say and they're just keeping it in. Or they don't like the person, they don't trust the person. They're just what? Keeping it in. Whereas guys, when they're silent, they just need time off. They need time off and they can what? Come back and have the discussion. When men take time off, women read it as what they do when they are quiet. Which is, uh, I'm re I really have nasty things to say to you. I have really ugly things to say to you. So, if I'm, so when men are quiet, women take it as rejection. And what most often happens is, is you must have seen this especially in uh, some houses where the husband and the wife are fighting. The husband doesn't want to fight anymore. He wants to go to the side corner and just... Just take a break. But the woman, she wants to communicate, right? And she doesn't want that rejection. So she's going after her husband, arguing with him even more, right? And he, him running away from her is causing her to become more upset, more angry. Anybody ever seen that? Yes. Yeah, you, I've heard of that, yes. You're telling a tough question. Huh? Tough question? <laughs> <laughs> story. Okay. So, okay. So we're on the same page. So the wife wants to communicate, the husband's like, it's better not to communicate. Because this is, this is, there's another reason why men don't want to communicate at that time. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. So, what is the Prophet saying, Sallallahu Alaihi The Prophet is saying that that same neediness, right, that they're made from the rib, the same neediness that they want to be, they want to feel cherished. And men want to give to them. That part, you love that part, right? But when they're going through their ups and downs and their waves, which I'll discuss in a minute, uh, when they're going through their natural cycles, you can say, okay, then at certain points they say things that are very uh, rude. And they don't make sense to the male world. So the Prophet is saying, don't try to what? Straighten them. Meaning don't make them like men. Right? Let them be women. Because that's what makes their, them beautiful. That's what makes them wanting to be cherished and to take. So anyway, she needs someone to listen, not solve her problem. Because the minute you start solving her problem, she feels you are invalidating her feelings. Next, women feel a sense of burden. This is something very uh, powerful about women. Because women like to give and give. And I've seen this in a lot of divorce cases where women will say, I don't have any more energy. I, I don't have anything more to give. This is the exact word they'll use. I can't give anything more. Because what will happen is 10 years will pass by. She feels, I've been giving and giving and giving. Because, because women are the nurturers, right? I mean, when she's saying I'm giving is not in the same way as the male giving. For the male, it's a, a need. For the women, it's part of their nurturing thing. And so, for women, men become like projects. I need to change him. I need to improve him in that sense. Okay. Women feel a sense of burden. They do not have, they, they do, if they don't have a support system, when she has someone who will 
validate her feelings, she relaxes and feels better because she feels that she does not have to earn her love. Meaning what I mean by that is, when somebody validates her feelings, when somebody validates, oh, you're feeling like this, I'm sorry you had to go through such hard time, then that builds a certain trust by which she begins to open herself up to the person who's validating her. Okay? She begins to open her heart up to the person who's validating her. But if the person says, well, okay, well, I'm going to tell you how next time you can have a better day, right? Then she feels she's being invalidated and she, she doesn't open up. Women, when, women she, she feel, when women feel she's given too much and got nothing back, she blames her partner. When women feel I've been giving in this relationship and gotten nothing back, she what? You did nothing for me, the same thing that we studied last time. You did nothing for me. Then she may say to you, you never loved me. She may be unresponsive to her husband. So if a man listens to her, even if it sounds like blame, she will open up when she sees he's really listening. And this is what the Prophet's saying. Look, be kind to women. I know that they have curves, right? They have these problems. But that's what makes a girl a girl. This is why guys don't find women that are, I mean, sorry to say, but this is true. Men don't find women that are in executive positions attractive because they've been, and, and men, women that are beginning to behave like men, men are not attracted to that. So on the one side, we're attractive to the curves and to the feminine aspect but that feminine aspect comes with certain baggage, a certain aspect, certain, you can say, qualities. Like with every rose, there's a thorn, like I said. Women live having expectations. This is, men also live, but women have expectations for particular events. Did you come on time? Right? Did you not come on time? Did you bring this for me? Did you not bring this for me? Right? Particular, every event has a certain what? Huh? Expectation. Women live, living without expectations and feel disappointed when those expectations are not met. So over here also the women have to realize that this is part of their nature and that they have to learn to forgive and they have to be able to recognize that not coming on time, for example, is, is, not, is not a big deal and should not be made into a big deal. Also, a wife should know her boundaries. What can she give without feeling resented? And this is if the relationship's going very bad, where she feels she's been helping the husband and she's not getting that understanding that she wants from the husband. So then she has to understand that she doesn't have to be feeling that she has to nurture or give back to the family. This is not necessary. Anyway, this is a side point, but not a, it's important in the finer details. This is another thing. Now, I said the male's biggest fear is that he fears that he's not going to be a good what giver, a good provider. And a female's biggest fear is that she's not capable, she's not worthy of love. She's not worthy of being cherished. And women often feel they need too much. You know, you, uh, you might, must have heard the term, some women would say, you know, I must be too much demanding or some women are too demanding, right? This is a guilt trip that they have within themselves also, that I'm always demanding, demanding, and demanding, because this is how Allah made them so that we can provide for them and they keep demanding and we keep providing for them. But this comes with certain other problems. Women often feel they need too much and they are often scared of this in themselves and, they meet, and, and then when something is not given to them, then they feel rejected because that fear was already that fear was already there. Because that fear was already there. So when the husband doesn't do something, then they feel... And this is why women go to the extremes of saying, Oh, you don't love me. You never did anything for me. Because they already have that fear built in. Just like the male has the fear that I won't be able to be man enough for her. She has the fear that I'm not uh, woman enough for him, you can say. Especially nowadays, it's important to keep in mind uh, if, uh, you know, if, if this is for reverted sisters and people with a lot of baggage, they have to keep in mind that a background where she was not supported, if a woman from her background was not supported, she will have even more fears of rejection and will have to keep 
the fear of rejection away, even push away subconsciously those who want to support her. And when this reaches a higher level, women push away even the ones that want to help her because she's had this history. So she has this fear they're going to go away anyway. So the minute she feels any fear, she'll just completely try to push them away. So this is something, a phenomenon that does happen, especially with some of the reverted sisters and so on and so forth. Then when the man feels she's rejecting him, he feels turned off. Right? Because then when she rejects him, she has a fear, she has an emotional reaction to that fear, then she rejects the guy, the guy feels rejected. When the guy feels rejected, he doesn't feel that she trusts me, that I'm like her, I'm provider for everything. She doesn't trust me to, to, be, to, to, to be there for her. And so he feels rejected, and so this becomes a vicious cycle. Okay? And so what the Prophet is saying in this hadith is that you have to go around the curve. Right? That women will do and behave in the way that they behave. It's natural. And this is just something about women that women have to accept about themselves. And this is just something that men have to accept about women. Meaning this nature of... And especially when I talk about the wave, inshallah, then it'll become... Uh, it's like men and women are t put together to be tested. This is why I found when I was studying this, I found these ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah very interesting. You know, when Allah says to Adam, Ya Adam, uskun anta wa al jannah. You and your wife eat from Jannah, right? And then when Allah puts them, when the shaitan tricked them and everything, what did Allah say? Ihbitu ba'dukum li ba'din adu. Go down from here, you're now enemies of one another. Meaning shaitan and husband and the wife. Meaning that, that because you have, it's like putting together two different species, male and female. They're like, they, have, they come from two different planets, two different aliens, you can say. Like men are from Mars and women are from Venus. And you're putting them together and you're expecting them to get along together. And it's a test. You know, it's a test. And so that, uh, then... Often at this point, when the wife is desperate, hopeless, she will communicate this to her husband, but this hopelessness, this hopeless neediness turns the man off more. Because there are two types of neediness. One is, she's needy, but she trusts that he will get done for me what I need. And the other is neediness, which is, I need you to do this for me because I don't trust you. You need to do this for me because I don't trust, I need to be on your back to get you to do this because... I don't trust that you will what? Do this for me. This type of neediness, where the female or the wife projects that I don't trust my husband, turns the guy off. Because he needs a wife that he feels is encouraging her, appreciates her, admires her, believes in him. This is, you know, when, when, you, when the Prophet came down, remember with Khadija radiallahu anha, this phenomenon where Khadija believed in the Prophet. Right? Believed in what, what he was saying. He just as a wife towards a husband. Uh, neediness is saying you need support because needing is, 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 is needing, the needing is to reach out to the man trusting him. That's needy. Women feel needy. They, this is just naturally part of how they are. Neediness is saying you need support because of lack of trust. So women tend, okay, women tend to get hurt and disappointed easily. This is something, again, from research we've seen that a lot of times it is the women that need to, and what the psychologists today, what they're doing wrong, is that they're putting a lot, now see things are shifting now. First a lot of the burden was put on the men, now a lot of that because of the research work is shifting on the women. They can never keep that balance that Islam wants to create. On the one side, the Prophet is telling women, hey, Never say to your husband, you never did anything for me. Right? And on the other side, he's giving command to the men, be kind to them. Because they have a certain nature that you have to be careful of. So this is the balance. When love, when a, when a wife realizes she can be loved and is worthy of love, it means to her she can open her doors to the man to give him more. This causes the relationship to get better and stronger. But when 10 years pass and she feels like she's given too much and she has no more energy, then she begins to close the doors. And as she's closing the doors, the male, the, the husband no longer feels she trusts me in, in the way the husband wife should trust. The, uh, she doesn't need me, right? Because if she trusts him, she'll open her doors and say, I need you. 
If she doesn't trust him, she'll close the door and say, I don't need you. A man's deepest fear is that uh, he's not good enough, as I already mentioned. And then he, he focuses on success and accomplishments and things like that, providing for the family. But essentially, the real problem is, do, does the wife trust the husband that he will provide and do whatever is needed to do to make me happy? So that is the real. Ironically, when a man cares about a wife, his fear causes him to give less. What do I mean by that? Like I said, if he, he loves his wife, first of all, this is what we've seen statistically. If a guy loves his wife, he will get more easily angry with her also. This is one point. So it's more easy because if you don't love someone, then you're not going to be personally hurt when she rejects your suggestions. Right? If she says no to you and you love her, it's like a personal rejection. Whereas if you don't love her and she says no, it's no big deal. It's like anybody else saying no. But when, especially because the guy wants to be the provider, and if she says no, then it hurts the guy a lot. And on top of that, if she has fears, and she is, is emotionally reacting, and, and we're, we're talking about in general, and then we're going to talk about a certain wave that happens with women where it's very specific. Um, so... <clears throat> He appears most uncaring when he is most afraid to avoid conflict. Because now he can't give her, he's not going to get close to her, because he knows if he's going to try to go close to her, it's going to create friction. And he doesn't want that friction. So, then not going, as I said, how do women read a man staying away from her? Silence is seen as, as how? As a rejection from the woman's side. Right? And so... He appears most uncaring when he's most afraid to avoid conflict. Man has to accept and be comfortable with the phrase. And uh, this is another thing. This turns off women also. Uh, that is that a man has to be the provider. This is part of his nature to be the provider. But man, man should accept, okay, I do have limitations. I don't know, or I don't know everything. I can't provide for everything. A very typical example of this is, you know, they say that men never stop to ask for directions. It drives women crazy. So a guy has to get to the destination by himself. And the wife will be saying, let's stop and ask someone. Right? Why don't we stop at the gas station or ask someone? Or why don't you call and ask someone? And the guy has the na nature in him that he has to prove to himself. He can't go wrong. Right? I mean, it's not in his nature to accept that I, may, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> you know, it's not in his nature to accept that. So the wife is getting upset. Why don't you call someone? And then that is because it's so much part of a male's nature to, to be the provider, to be the one who's on the right path. You know, it, he, makes it, it, he, makes, he gets more upset when the wife says, why don't you ask someone for the directions? Why don't you call someone for the direction? It makes the man more upset. Because he has to be the one that is right for her. And he's seeing now in front of his eyes that she is seeing that he's failing, right? So women will ask for directions, no problem. Because women don't, don't mind communicating. And women don't mind stopping somewhere or asking someone for directions. Whereas guys will find that very problematic, uh, generally speaking. So... Uh, Women also miss, uh, and I talked about, also misinterpret the silence of the man in the worst ways. So when the guy is silent and he's not talking to his wife because he's upset, she starts thinking, oh, he hates me. He doesn't love me. And I don't deserve his love. Or he's going to leave me. So it, especially, uh, it, she interprets the silence in the worst ways. The reason for this is because when she would be silent, it would be because she doesn't want to say something hurtful. Or when they no longer, or when she no longer trusts him and doesn't want to open up to him. So women become insecure when men become what? Quiet. When men don't want, when men become quiet, women become insecure. And so this is, you could say, the drama of the husband and wife that's taking place. Women need to realize that women, when men are stressed, they go to their cave and work things out, and no one is allowed there. Meaning, women need to realize this is natural for men to walk away, to have their time, to spend time alone, and then come back. And everything is normal for a guy. And then that's what turns off 
the, the wife because she's like, you were just angry with me and not talking to me and now you're completely, now you're completely normal as if you didn't do anything. But that was a normal process for the male. The moving away and staying quiet and taking time out yourself was a normal process for the male, which she then interprets it to be a, a rejection of hers. And then when he's back and he's normal, now she's upset. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, so women need to realize everything will be fine when he comes back from the cave. It is important that women try to get a man to talk. It is important that women don't try to get, when the man is quiet, women should not try to push him to talk. I'm sure everybody's been through that, where the wife is pushing your buttons and you don't want to talk, right? And then that just makes the whole matter worse, right? Women need to realize at that time that it's better to be quiet, to let him be quiet, let him get over whatever he's, because this is just the way it is. Like a very uh, common example of this is, let's say the wife wants the husband to do something. And actually this is particularly true for boys in the family, little boys as they're growing up and men, the husband. The mother says, vacuum. And the husband's sitting and he says, okay, I'll vacuum. But she wants him to go and do it right now. now right. And then two minutes later she says, hey, I want you to vacuum. So now he has to start all over in his mind. Because the male has to convince himself that it was his idea, that it's his idea that I want, I need to do the vacuuming. He needs to convince himself that it's my idea. And so every time she says to him, go and do the vacuum, he has to reset the button, <laughs> right? And it can end up in an argument because he keeps going back and resetting the button. Okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. But if she just had a little bit of patience, he would actually do it. Her going after him to do it, do it, do it, didn't get him to necessarily to do it. Well, sometimes yes, and sometimes no. The other thing is, that it is important, the other thing is men do not like, because I said men want to be the givers, right? And they have to be the perfect providers. Men do not like unsolicited advice, or unsolicited criticism. When the wife comes to the husband because something went wrong, or like, you were in the wrong way of your directions, now the wife is like, you know, I really think you should, you know, print out uh, the directions or go by. Unsolicited advice by the wife to the husband is, is for, the husband sees that as a form of rejection. That she doesn't like me. So, now, over here I have to say that, uh, Men do not like unsolicited advice or sympathy even. Not just unsolicited advice, but also if the husband's going through a hard time, he's stressed out, he doesn't like the wife coming to him and giving him sympathy that's not solicited. If it's solicited, he, he wants to, if he opens up to his wife, then he's okay with that conversation. But if she comes to him and shows a type of sympathy when it's mostly disliked by men, they need to prove themselves. He needs, I trust you to handle whatever it is, unless you, so this is what he needs. He needs from the wife to say, I trust you whatever it is. That type of attitude. The only other thing is, unless, uh, unless the male asks the wife directly for help. And you can come to be, uh, so women try to control men by criticizing or giving unsolicited advice. However, if they want to say something, they should do so without casting judgment or saying they're bad. This is another very important point. Women, when they give their unsolicited advice, it's usually a judgment on the person, a label on the person. Rather than saying, uh, you know, uh, wouldn't it be a good idea for us to get a GPS? The, what they will say is, oh, you never do it, uh, never get, get anywhere properly, right? It'll be like a blank, general blanket statement, rather than, like, how would men approach it? Men would approach it by saying, well, let's buy a GPS. S solving the problem is what we like to do. Right. But women, they'll give a blanket statement of a label saying, oh, you know, you never get anywhere on time. You're always late and you never get the directions right. 
This hurts the male in the long term in his relationship because he begins to see himself that I'm not able to provide the way sh she would like. And he loses motivation and then that starts to drift the two personalities apart, the male and the female. Women try to control men by criticizing or giving unsolicited advice. If they want to say something, they should say so without casting judgment or saying they are bad. Some women say, no matter how I tell him, he gets angry or ignores me. Some women say this. No matter how I tell him, I've tried to tell him in a hundred different ways, but he is always getting angry, always ignores me. The answer is she could, she could not offer advice or criticism unless it is sought. He's not, it's, it's going to make him angry unless it is sought. What he needs is acceptance from her. He needs, first of all, before uh, any advice or anything, he needs to know that, that she, what? Trusts me and she knows I'll do everything right. That's what he needs first. So, uh, when he needs acceptance, in fact, men will not open us, they will not open on, up unless they feel accepted and trusted. And this is true for men. Men will not open up to somebody they don't feel trusted by. Men need to understand that when they go to their cave, women perceive this as a form of rejection. He should learn to say, I will be back. So the man also, this going around the woman's curve, so she doesn't feel like you're rejecting her, or that you know she wants some answers from you immediately, you need to tell her, look, you know, I just need time out right now. This is how all men are. I know you don't know this. Listen to Sheikh Omar's lecture on this, right? But I'll be back and we can have the discussion when I work everything out in my mind. Half a minute? Yeah. Oh, this is not going to be... <sighs> okay, so we will inshallah continue because there are major things that I haven't... Uh, okay, so I'll say the word of Allah, and I'll say the word of Allah, and I'll say the word of Allah, and I'll say the word of Allah.